What makes an airplane turn? When we fly straight and level, the lift acts perpendicular to our wings. So in order to make the airplane turn, we have to change our vertical lift to horizontal to allow the airplane to pull through all of the headings. We cannot just use the rudder to twist the nose and expect the airplane to turn. If you use the rudder alone to try to turn the airplane without changing your vertical lift to horizontal, the only thing that happens is the airplane will slip through the air this way. We must be able to change the vertical lift to horizontal in order to have the airplane turn. Now how we do this in the airplane is by our ailerons. The ailerons, remember, are located on the trailing edge, on the outside trailing edge of the wing on both sides. And the ailerons work opposite of each other. One goes down while the other one goes up. We'll look at this other airplane um, that is glued in the position of a left hand turn. If you turn the airplane, the yoke, to the left, this aileron will come down and this aileron will go up. By having this aileron go downward, you've changed the curvature of that wing. And by changing the curvature, you've increased the angle of attack which increases the lifting capability of that wing. On the other side of the wing, you've actually disrupted some of your airflow across the wing. So when this one comes up, you reduce the amount of lift on this wing, causing it to drop. The increased lift on this wing causes it to rise. Now we're gonna talk in a minute about uh, adverse yaw created when the downward deflected aileron creates drag and pulls the nose in the opposite direction. But first, let's talk a little bit more about uh, when the airplane turns. If we're flying straight and level, like I said, the vertical lift acts perpendicular to our wings, and the opposite force would be the weight of the airplane where gravity pulls us downward. When we bank the airplane, we start to lose our vertical lift, and it becomes more horizontal, allowing us to turn. We still have the weight of the aircraft. If we turn the airplane and we start to lose our vertical lift, it becomes horizontal, the airplane's going to start to descend. So to counteract that, you would have to increase back pressure on the yoke to maintain your altitude. And the steeper you turn, the more back pressure is uh, needed in order to maintain your altitude. Remember Newton says for every reaction, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So now we have introduced a centrifugal force into the airplane. And again, centrifugal force comes from when we're in a turn, we pull back. So the centrifugal force is opposite that backwards pull. You've felt this before, I'm sure. If you're in your car and you drove around the corner too fast, you feel your body weight slide to the side. That's just merely the centrifugal force acting opposite of your turn. To elaborate a little further about the adverse yaw, like I said, this airplane is glued in a position to make a left-hand turn. So when the pilot turns the yoke to the left, the uh, aileron on the right wing would deflect downward, creating a more curved surface, which produces more lift. But as everything in life, with something good, there comes something bad. So when that aileron is hanging down in the wind, it creates drag. Think of sticking your hand out of the car window, how it gets pulled backwards. The same thing happens when the aileron is deflected downward. Now the manufacturers do compensate for this a little bit by hinging the aileron on top instead of directly in the center to try to reduce a little bit of this drag, but they can't totally eliminate it. So what happens when you try to turn the airplane? If you turn the airplane, this downward deflected aileron tends to drag and pull the nose in the wrong direction of your turn, and we call that an uncoordinated turn. So what we want to do is we want the nose to go in the same direction as our turn. So therefore, we use rudder pressure, that's your foot pressure, along with the turn. If we're gonna make a turn to the left, we obviously would look first to make sure there's no traffic. We clear left, and then you proceed with applying left rudder and left ailerons together to make the nose of the airplane and the wings turn in the same direction. Now I said that that's a coordinated turn. Let's see what happens when the turn is not coordinated. One of the instruments in the airplane is called the turn coordinator, and we can use this turn coordinator to evaluate the quality of our turn. The turn coordinator has a little ball that can move freely by centrifugal force. And if you were to make a, a circle in an airplane, ideally you want the nose and the tail, or you want the tail of the airplane to follow directly behind the nose. And that would be a coordinated turn where you've used the proper amount of aileron and the proper amount of rudder together. But let's say that you didn't use any rudder whatsoever. 
when you went to turn the airplane, the nose goes in the wrong direction. So your nose would therefore be outside of the turn, even though you were actually banking toward the left. And how that would look on your turn coordinator, we'll just draw just the uh, ball part of it, is the ball would come to the inside like this. And the saying is step on the ball or apply rudder pressure to put the ball back in the cage. If you had applied rudder pressure, left rudder pressure, it would push this little ball back into the center and realign your tail behind your nose, causing a coordinated turn, and that's what we're looking for. Let's say that you got a little overexcited and you pushed too much left rudder um, in relation to the amount of ailerons you used. In that scenario, um, your nose would go inside of the turn before the wings actually began to turn. And how it would look on your turn coordinator is the ball would be over here on this side where you've applied so much rudder pressure you've pushed the ball to the outside. Now we call this a skidding turn. We call this a slipping turn. And that one is coordinated. Now in the beginning of your flight lessons you will have to pay a decent amount of attention between outside the cockpit and the turn coordinator so you can see how much rudder pressure is needed and how well a job you are doing with the rudder. Um, but later on as you proceed through your flight training, it should become a natural instinct. When you make a turn, you want the centrifugal force, that weight to go straight down in your seat. You never want to feel like you're sliding out of your seat. You always want your, the, uh, your weight to go straight down in your seat to be a coordinated turn. Now, we have to look a little further at left turning tendencies and how we're going to have to use the rudder pressure to keep us coordinated while we're climbing, straight and level, and descending.